So our scripture reading this morning is very short, the shortest scripture in history. It's simply Micah chapter 7, verse 8, which I hope you recognize from the verse that was on top of the candle you received from your care circle leaders. It is, when I fall, I shall rise. When I sit in darkness, God will be a light to me. So for today, I must confess, I don't even know what to say. I don't even know what to say on this day that is a cause for great celebration, but also carries layers and layers of grief. I don't know what to say about our regathering in the sanctuary because it has been 18 long months since we were in this sacred space of ours. And it is amazing and emotional to be here. And yet, last Sunday surprised me with its normalcy. I'd been joking for months and months that when I finally got back in this pulpit, all I would do is just stand here and cry from the, the overwhelmingness of it. And I didn't, it felt normal. And I realized later that perhaps this was because I never felt disconnected from this community. I never felt like our church had gone away. I never felt like we were dependent on this room to worship or to be the church. Our worship and care of one another continued as wide and deep as ever, in some cases deeper. And I don't know what to say about our regathering in the sanctuary because although many of us are here in these beautiful curved pews once again, some of us are at home and some of us have been lost entirely. We celebrate gathering in our sanctuary today, and yet we go forward not as things were. We begin something new today. We fall and we rise. I don't know what to say about this day 20 years and one day after 9-11. The remembrances yesterday of 9-11 have brought back the vulnerability, the images of towers and smoke, the sense of life turned upside down, the heroism and sacrifice that pierced us. The trauma of that day and the weeks that followed are layered underneath all the chaos of now. We fall and we rise. I don't know what to say about the past three years since the gas explosions in Merrimack Valley. It was yesterday, three years ago, when houses burst into flames and families rushed out into front yards and parents frantically tried to locate their children. Another layer of trauma underneath of now. We fall and we rise. And I don't know what to say about the past 18 months of sickness and loss and uncertainty. In the winter, we watched as more than 3,000 people a day died from COVID. And then the vaccines. And now this. Now we watch as parents yell at children who want to wear masks to school. More layers of trauma, and yet we fall and we rise. Last week, my wise friend and colleague, Reverend Sarah Drummond, Dean of Andover Newton Seminary at Yale, preached a sermon to her new class of students. She reflected on this moment for her institution and for all of us in churches. She said, my prayer for us as individuals and for our institutions that have been through the ringer is that we take our time 
and we tell our stories. We shouldn't get up too quickly and pretend like nothing has happened. We need to take a moment and to be honest about how messed up these months have been. Lived experiences left unexamined in the light of faith and knowledge aren't bound to help us grow. Yes, we shouldn't get up too quickly and pretend like nothing has happened. Yes, we are, we are back in our sanctuary. But not all of us are back. And it isn't the same, right? We're wearing masks, we're all spread out, we're not singing, and we are grieving. We're gathering here today weighed down by loss and change and uncertainty and the uncertainty of what is to come. I think it's not only appropriate, but crucial to linger in this moment, to savor the bittersweetness of today, here, now, when we are together in this new way, marking a new beginning, marking the start of our next chapter as a church community, even as we don't really know what the future will hold. But we do know some things, right? We know there is dying and rising always. We know that when we fall, we shall be lifted up. We know that God's light shines for us, always and everywhere through all things, small and large, devastating and triumphant. We know that this church, all of us, have weathered a storm like none of us have experienced before. It hasn't always been easy, and we haven't all been satisfied all the time, but together we have bumbled our way forward, being resilient and flexible and forgiving and faithful. Let us not get up too quickly and pretend that nothing has happened. Because on this day of regathering, we also remember seeing those two towers fall. We remember the gas explosions. We remember being locked in our homes last March. We remember George Floyd, knee on his neck. We remember the attack on the Capitol. We remember 3,000 people dying every day. Let us not get up too quickly and pretend that nothing has happened. Because we have been changed. Parts of us have fallen away and parts of us are rising up. We are not the same people. We are not the same church. There is no going back, but we are going ahead. We are always sustained by God's light, that light that connects us. And so my friends, I proclaim to you, I proclaim to you, whether you are here in the sanctuary or home on Zoom or watching later on YouTube, God's light shines with you. We are in a time of shadows and uncertainty. At times it can feel like we are literally living in a dystopian movie, complete with deadly viruses, draconian laws, and alternative realities. So may your candle remind you, and may the words of the prophet Micah remind you, there is always dying and rising, always falling and getting up always death and resurrection. The candles that you each received, and if you didn't get one, please let us know and we will get one to you. These candles that we share are a sign of the light that unites us. No matter where we are, the light of Christ shines for us. 
No matter where we worship, we are part of this community, an important part of this community. No matter what darkness lurks in the corners, no matter what shadows we fear in the world, God shall be a light to us. God's strength, God's promises, and God's vision shall brighten whatever storms we must face. You are not alone. We fall and we rise. But let us not get up too quickly and pretend that nothing has happened. Because so much has happened. We bring all of that to this moment. This moment of beginning again, this moment of newness and possibility and hope and change. Let us trust in God and let us trust in the strength of this church, of this community, in each of us. Because the light shines in the darkness and the darkness will not overcome it. Remember, God's light shines for you and for all of us always. Amen. Thank you.